Hello students, welcome to Year 11 Chemistry and the Reactive Chemistry module. This is video number 10 and in this video we're going to just get a bit of an overview of some of the techniques that have been used uh, by the indigenous peoples of Australia to detoxify their foods. One of the important things um, about science generally, um, and certainly chemistry in particular, is that it's, it's a very, very old subject. It's something that we've known about for a very long period of time, and people have been using chemistry techniques for thousands and thousands of years. The Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities have a vast history of using chemistry um, in order to survive in their environment. And one of the things that we would like you to do is to become a little bit more familiar with some of the techniques that they used and indeed are still using in order to um, remove particularly a lot of toxic material from some of their fruits, uh, nuts and leaves. So in this particular video, I just wanted to touch on a couple of the techniques that have been used um, by the Indigenous people in Australia to um, give you an idea of not only what chemistry has been involved, but also the sorts of consequences of each of these actions. So I think probably the first thing to do is to just give you a little bit of a list of some of the different types of techniques that we do know about. Um, the first and probably one of the most important is leaching. Um, quite clearly, if there is material that is potentially toxic to humans uh, in a particular food source, then Obviously, if you eat that sauce, you are likely to um, either become very sick or die. So we need to remove that particular chemical from the food that we're hoping to eat. Leaching is one way of doing that. It's, it's about trying to draw out whatever material is present that is toxic in order to leave the um, material that is safe behind. There's a couple of ways in which this happens. Most of them are associated with physical kinds of um, chemical uh, physical kinds of change but some also involve chemical change um, one way is to use heat often heating speeds up chemical reactions but it also uh, involves the denaturation or the um, breaking down of complex chemicals particularly things like proteins um, it can uh, have an effect on the state of matter. So sometimes um, sufficient heat is enough to change the state from say a liquid uh, to a gas. But also chemistry like natural fermentation, we know that fermentation is actually a chemical process in which natural fungi in particular can be used to, um, to anaerobically break down sugars into ethanol and uh, carbon dioxide. This also changes the chemical nature of the um, uh, chemicals present in a particular food source. Uh, often one of the techniques is to leave uh, material sitting in water for a long period of time. This is a particularly good um, technique that links into leaching and it's based on the fact that there's levels of solubility what I'll call solubility differences in the uh, different types of material that may be present in a particular food source. So um, often grinding occurs in order to break the material down a little bit. Uh, leaching can occur as that material is then um, placed in water, usually in a sort of container for some uh, considerable period of time and the water is allowed to leach away from, uh, to leach those toxic chemicals away from the rest of the um, substance that you're looking at. Um, after that process occurs then there can often be some washing which helps to um, purify what remains if there's any any toxic material that remains then the washing can often um, continue that process of leaching the toxic material away. Following that um, the grinding process also can further break down, usually um, through obviously physical means, um, the, the food source that the, you're looking at. The combination of um, each of these different types of techniques, both physical and chemical processes, are what have been used for thousands of years in order to try and take advantage of the native material that um, the local inhabitants found. Um, all around them. 
this particular, um, I guess, focus area of your syllabus is best done as a case study, and we will be having a look in class at a specific example or, or multiple examples of where these processes of chemistry have been applied by Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples um, in order for them to um, safely consume materials, fruits, nuts and leaves in their environment. But we'll leave that as a case study for class and hopefully this has provided a little bit of an introduction just on some of the different techniques used by the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people um, um, in terms of the application of chemistry. Thanks for watching.